Uh, right, let's move on and talk about voting, shall we? Uh, who will you be voting for in the next general election? And how old are you, by the way? Because apparently middle-aged people are turning away from the Tories. This is all to do with this big study about the generational divides in this country. Uh, middle-aged people, apparently those in their 40s and 50s, uh, are turning away from the Tories. I found it quite astonishing that 40s is classed as middle age these days, but, um, you know, apparently it is. Do you, what do you think is going on? Because previously it would have been that if you're slightly older, you would have gravitated more towards the Tories. It seems now less so for things like the mortgage costs, the childcare issues, etc. Do you think this is concerning for the Tories or not? Well, I'm looking forward to middle age, um, Michelle. You're, um, you're going to let me know when you get there, yeah? I just want to put get that in there right at the outset. I'm looking forward to getting there eventually. Mm -hmm. um, not there yet. Um, the issues you mention are important. People are very anxious about mortgage, cost of living, things like that. I understand all of that. But what this study shows is not just that they're anxious about those things, but that their underlying views on certain matters have moved much more to the left and are much closer to younger people um, than they are to older people. And I think half of the reason for that is that nobody is actually articulating the case for a conservative values society in this country anymore. What does that we're mean, not seeing conservative it, values we're not society? Seeing, well, we know what it means. We know well, it no, means a lot of people hard, don't know what it means. Well, that's true. But uh, I, I suppose you're right. That's the point I'm making. A lot of people don't know what it means, and people aren't making the case for a society in which you have responsibilities to look after yourself and your family, not just social responsibilities, not the state to look after everything, that hard work is really important, that savings are important, and that you can't look to the state to do everything for you. Um, also, of course, a lot of people have been distracted. We're going to come to this later on LTNs. And they've been very alarmed by the, by the extravagant and unjustified language being used by a lot of the green wing, um, which suggests that there is an immediate crisis or an emergency that they've got to do something about. And I think that nobody, I don't see anybody out there from the government actually making a case for a conservative society, and they haven't done so for years. So it's hardly surprising people drift off and believe the things they are being told when yeah. they're not being to given the other side of the case. Yes, I, I um, believe in typical conservative values, if you want to call them that, personal responsibility, small state, tough law and order and all the rest of it. But many people uh, will be watching this. They might share, you know, in principle, Laurie, those values, but they're shouting at the screen going, yes, Michelle, I would love to be responsible for myself. I would love to have savings. But mm. the cost base that people have, their mortgages, mm. uh, obviously inflation, all the rest of it, it's making it to the point that even if you wanted to have conservative values, you perhaps would struggle now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the conservatives made choices over the last 12 years that made this country less secure and us less safe to things like the energy shock and that we're experiencing at the moment. So what's happened as time has gone on is that's affected a wider and wider segment of society. Uh, it's starting to impact those who have managed to save a lot, who have got a home, have got a mortgage and so on. And I, looking at the data, we've got people who are, are talking about things around the cost of living, the fact that their pay has been suppressed. A really big finding that came out in the report is that you have a lot of people who are in this... Uh, slightly blurry age back of what we call middle age now, who are saying that they wanted more control in the workplace. They don't feel they have enough power, for example, and they feel that that's bouncing back and hitting their pay. And they're worried about the fact that their public services, the education, the hospital services they have the right to, because they paid into the system, have suffered from chronic underinvestment. So decisions that were made to underinvest in this country that made it less secure are starting to blow back against people who in the past may have been more economically secure. And I see it as no surprise that that is leading to people to want to move away from the Conservative Party. Um, I wonder where will you go if you are someone that's listening to this and you're in agreement with what you're hearing, you're less likely perhaps to go Tory at the next election. Where will you go then? Will you go anywhere at all? Will you turn out and vote? Or will you just say, you know, no, I'm not bothering next time? Um, by the way, you say your first point that you made was about energy security in this country. You say about the last 12 years of the Tories. Many would say, hang on a second, the reason that we're in the situation with the energy is not the failings of the people in power of the last 12 years, but it's gone beyond that. It's many successive yeah. governments that have failed us. And now uh, we're reaping the, well, not reaping the rewards, we're reaping the consequences yeah. of that failure, I suspect. Um, 
Where do you think these people will go then, uh, Daniel, if less likely to go Tory than where? Well, we do know that um, things like this, disillusionment with the existing political parties, does have an effect on turnout, and that there will be people who will simply stay at home and a curse on both of you, or all of you, or whatever it is, and I'm not going to vote. Because mm. they feel their vote doesn't make a difference. I'll, so I'm I think, going to be one of them. I think there'll be... A, well, I, w I would discourage that, because I think it's very important to exercise your vote, even if from a list of people whom you don't really approve of, because it's, it, it, it is the most valuable democratic right you've got, and the right of participation. So I would, dis I would encourage you to cast your vote, the Michelle, even if... Even if you find it difficult to find a party. There'll be one out there that'll be less bad than the others. And I think you should... Um, well, I'm not saying who it would be for you, but you make your own choice. But I think you should cast your vote. But leaving that to one side, some people, I think, will not cast their vote. Some people, of course, will, will go to the Labour Party because Keir Starmer is, you know, he's sort of trying to, trying to sweep them up. The big interesting question is whether any of those will go to a new party or a fringe party and what effect that's likely to have. And I don't know the answer to those questions. Um, a lot of you are getting in touch, <coughs> by the way, about this middle-aged thing. I do not believe that you're middle-aged in your 40s. I might be statistically wrong, and I don't know, whatever, but, yeah, it feels very odd to me. Um, what, are, what Do you think that Labour will stand to gain from this Tory disillusionment? Yeah, I think the polls show that, right? People who have experienced one of the hardest periods in recent memory... Uh, they're looking at a party that seems to have an endemic problem with behaviours that border on or are outright corruption. You've got a guy who was Chancellor who, you know, accidentally missed £5 million on his tax return uh, while people are at home trying to afford their bills and then being also told by the Prime Minister that they're going to have to inevitably pay more tax. It just, the whole edifice is crumbling of competence and hypocrisy. And you were talking earlier about energy. I totally agree with you about energy policy over time. But it was a choice made in the 2010s to suppress wages, say, in the public sector. And you would have found yourself now down the line where many people who are in this age bracket we're talking about would have had a bit more money to be able to withstand themselves working hard and, and building up their own uh, self-dependency instead of relying on the state, withstand the shocks that we've been through. But it was a political choice to suppress those wages at a time that wasn't as unstable as it is now. So I think it, if you look at the polls, I mean, one that came out, I think, the last couple of days showed Tories being almost completely decimated at the next election. I don't think that's surprising. So well, I talk there. about suppressing wages. You know, the 2010 government inherited a total financial crisis from Gordon Brown and, and behaved in a way that tried to be sensible, tried to be sensible about public finances. And, and you economy. can criticise at the margins, you know, should you be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I can understand, That's what politics is all about, having that argument. I understand that. But the idea that there was, you know, that what you're describing as suppressing wages, I call uh, fiscal good sense. I just want to make a quibble about what Laurie said about the, the polls. When we see those polls that come out, and I agree they show a huge lead for Labour. Of mm -hmm. course they do. That's what they show. I'm not arguing about that. But by the time we see those numbers, they have, of course, removed from them the people who are not voting. So Some polls. Yeah. So what we don't see, what we don't see is how much, you know... The, me. How many people... You well, don't see me. But you may not be the only one. Mm. You may not be the only one, I but you wouldn't know it necessarily from those leads. The, yeah, and, and the point here is that when we're, as we get close to the election, you, I think, will have to have parties that are very, that have a very credible story about how we can economically renew this country. Gordon Brown did not cause the collapse of the American housing market, no, Northern which led to started it. a Let's financial this started in crisis. Yeah, but you said this Gordon Labour, Brown's Labour economic says crisis. It all starts, the point it here, all starts in America. No, point, it all started here under Gordon Brown's what? The point here... And he then spent billions saving the world, as he put it. He wants to tell you the point. Go on. What's the point? If you're looking towards the next general election, you've got to look at parties that have got a vision for how we renew this country economically. And it doesn't mean us getting in the same bind that we're in now, where on one side we've got chancellors avoiding taxes and giving contracts for fake PPE to people in the House of Lords. 
and then over here expecting us all to have to pay higher bills and not be given enough support and suffer under an NHS that didn't get investment. That story does not add up. I do find it quite interesting, though, that uh, when we're talking about present day uh, politics and governments, you know, you will say about corruption and you'll blame it all at the door of the Tories. Um, They're but... in power. Yeah, I know. But when uh, Daniel then talks about the situation in 2008, you immediately say, well, that was global factors. Whereas actually, some would argue that if you look at lots of the mess uh, that's going on in this country, mm. a lot of that are global factors. But how come you don't give credit to the global factors now, but you give all the credit to global factors then? So this is a crucial point. Daniel said... It talk, talked about Gordon Brown's economic crisis. It came from abroad. The question is then what domestic responses are made. Now, the, the Labour government in the years before the 2007 crisis spent way too much time cozying up to the city, deregulating and so on, making us more vulnerable to that then shock that came globally. A similar culpability is happening here where the Conservative government, prior to the shock coming, has made us more vulnerable. Um, I'll tell you what would have made us a damn sight more vulnerable as well. Uh, anyone with a good memory will remember when we were talking about trying to come out of these lockdowns and things like that, uh, if my memory does serve me right, and I think it does, it was Keir Starmer that was the one that was critical uh, of us coming out of lockdown, the pace of which we were coming uh, out. I think if we, he would have had his way, we would have been locked down for a whole lot longer. And, of course, we are all now seeing uh, the magnitude of consequences that came down from locking our economy down for as long as we did. Uh, Brian says, I'm 54 and I've always voted Tory, but no more, he says. I don't trust Labour or the Lib Dems, so it'll be Reform UK that gets my vote at the next general election. Uh, Peter, you say pretty much a similar thing, but you're not 54, you're a... A couple of years older, I'll, I'll be polite there. Um, lots of you are saying uh, that you used to be Tory and that you are not anymore. Lots of you saying that you would switch to reform. Um, but, uh, you know, a few months, how long have we got now till the next election? A year or so, perhaps? That is a long time in politics.